look at vaccines and flu shots if they do it a, a small amount of research and not believe what they're hearing through mainstream media we know it's a fact that they damn the amount that is are given to a child is extremely damaging to that child we know that artificial colors and sweeteners are damaging there's been enough studies as time progresses, we know that the damaging effects of pesticides, Roundup, glyphosate, you know, all of these things, genetically modified organisms, people are becoming educated. We're, we know the damaging effects and we're making progress because people are actually avoiding those things. The big companies never wanted to change. The You know, Kraft, Nabisco, all those companies... Pepsi, who just bought Suja juice for, you know, put a, uh, bought a big stake in Suja juice or organic. All the big companies are realizing now because of consumer demand that they need to start going chemical free too because no one's going to buy their products anymore. It's, it's exactly what we wanted and what we've been asking for for years. It's true. We're completely dominating the market and voting with our dollar. You know, I bet we're going to look back in 50, even 10, 20, 30, 40 years and say, what were we thinking? You know, because we feel like we have a responsibility right now to push all this and change all this. And some people agree and some people say you're crazy. In like 20 to 30 years, maybe 50, we're going to look back and say, how could we have ever thought that this was safe? What did we do? Just like in the 40s and 50s where they had like radiation rings and stuff like, oh, get your radiation ring. It's really good for you. It enhances your health and it cures cancer and stuff, obviously giving you cancer. That's what it's going to be like. It's going to say, it's, we're going to say things like the FDA said that was heart healthy. The FDA said that was good for you. The FDA said the RDA of vitamin C was what? We're going to be taking hundreds of thousands of the RDA of these vitamins and nutraceuticals. And it's going to be like no big deal. No one's even going to ask questions. Nobody, at that point, we're going to understand. It's going to be like knowing that drinking water is good. We're going to be like, we drank water with what in it? And you, would you, right, right. Granddad, you'd really turn on a tap and, Pharmaceuticals would be in your water? What the heck? You know, I think and arsenic, the number yeah. one cancer causing and the most right. toxic chemical, fluoride, number two toxic chemical known to man was in your water supply. It's like Rome, what was going on? Pipes. They had no idea. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, hey, maybe we shouldn't use these lead, uh, lead constructs to, to funnel all the water through it. Maybe that's why we're going insane. Not to mention we drink two, two bottles of wine every night. <laughs> and we're like, oh, shut up. You're insane. You don't know what you're talking about. That's how, that's how I feel right now. I feel like it's at a certain point, we're just going to realize what's going on. And again, that was Anthony Gucciardi and Dr. Group from our Money Bomb. And we thank you so much for supporting us. We thank you for supporting your health as well. It's been a big win for both of us. We'll be right back with some more clips from the live coverage of the GOP debate. Of course, the last couple of days, we've uh, had the Money Bomb to help us get to the next level. We're trying to get $1 million to reach 400 million viewers in North and Central America. One of the, way, the way that we're going to do that is with satellite free-to-air uh, programming, putting the nightly news as well as a radio program on satellite feeds that are free-to-air for your local station. So if you cannot support us financially, please try to support us in terms of getting on to these programs. People need to know that there's going to be an audience that they can sell they're advertising on in order to uh, carry this this programming uh, locally on television. You can help us to get on there. We have an information packet that you can download there that's at the uh, Money Bomb to uh, try to get us to a larger audience. You have helped us to get to this point. We are very thankful for that. Alex has extended the specials as part of the Money Bomb until we reach the uh, million dollar level. We're very close to that. We're also very close to selling out on a lot of these products like uh, X2. In spite of that, they have... Uh, continued the uh, free shipping till midnight tonight, and they've actually put on as a uh, special for the show uh, Survival Shield X2 as well as DNA Force. Both are 25% off as part of the um, hourly show special. This is something that we were doing throughout the uh, throughout the Money Bomb, and we sold out of uh, several of the products that are there. Those that remain, as you can see there on the screen, we have a lot of uh, products that are still. 15 to 20 percent off we have this show special of survival shield x2 which will sell out this weekend uh, no question about it as well as dna force are both 25 percent off now i want to go back to the debate because of course we were talking to um, wayne madsen and he said it, it is absolutely a ridiculous scenario there was a lot about it that was ridiculous as we talked about celebrity big brother aspects of it trying to create a conflict so they could get sound bites from it a lot of silly questions especially especially at the very end remember the question where they asked people about uh, 
who should be the new face on the $10 bill. Uh, the Treasury Department has said that they're going to put a woman on the $10 bill. Currently, we have Alexander Hamilton. And it was very interesting to hear. Of course, there's a lot of silly answers. My wife, my mother, all this other kind of stuff. It, trivializing this whole process as if it wasn't trivialized enough. Make it even more trivial. But it was interesting, I thought, to hear Ted Cruz and what he had to say. He says, I wouldn't change the $10 bill. I'd change the 20 I'd take Andrew Jackson off, and I'd leave Alexander Hamilton where he was. Now, if you know your history, you know that Alexander Hamilton fought against most of the other founding fathers, fought against Thomas Jefferson, who said a central bank would be the ruin of our country, and it has been. He fought against Thomas Jefferson. Now, Alexander Hamilton wanted a central bank. They were able to get one, and when that charter started, came up for renewal during uh, Andrew Jackson's uh, uh, presidency. He said, I will kill the central bank or it will kill me. And you know what? They nearly did. There was an assassination attempt on his life. Many people believe that that was motivated by the bankers who wanted to keep that central bank there. But he nevertheless stopped the renewal of the central bank charter. And we did not have a central bank for a very long time, not until it was recreated in 1913 as the private Federal Reserve. And as we have seen, Jefferson's predictions of the ruin of our country came true. But I found it very interesting. I thought that was one serious aspect uh, there of that ridiculous exchange when Ted Cruz said, yeah, he liked Alexander Hamilton, but he didn't like Andrew Jackson. Exactly what you would expect from somebody whose wife is a Goldman Sachs banker. That has always been one of my major concerns about Ted Cruz, as well as his qualifications to actually even run for presidency in terms of uh, uh, being a uh, citizen as defined by the Constitution. Now, looking at the transcript of the debate, and it was a very long debate. Everybody was talking about how long it was. Uh, Donald Trump was joking. He says, I think it was longer than uh, Gone with When. How long was Gone with the When? It was over, it was about three hours long, incredibly long, as many people pointed out. Um, the uh, transcript was longer than Hamlet. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't end with everybody committing suicide. Just joking. Uh, I did a word search of the transcript because it's, it's you know, 150, 200 pages long, depending on your, uh, your font size. I looked up, I thought, you know, they talk anything at all about civil asset forfeiture, you know, just stealing people's private property without charging them with a crime, finding them guilty, any of that kind of stuff, making you sue them to get your property back. No, no, because that's part of the war on drugs. We don't really want to talk about the government stealing people's private property, even if you're Republicans who are all about financial freedom. There are some groups like Freedom Works that are now tackling civil asset forfeiture head on, but not any of these people except for Rand Paul. He has introduced legislation to stop that, but of course it wasn't talked about in the debate. They get, didn't give him a chance to talk about that, and none of the other candidates are interested whatsoever in the issue, the, the injustice and the uh, subversion of our Constitution with civil asset forfeiture. Did they talk about liberty? No, not really. Uh, they, there were three mentions of the word liberty in there. Uh, we had uh, Rubio and Carly Fiorina talking about, actually, Carly Fiorina had a great line. One nation, under God, individual, liberty and justice for all. I, I don't know if she said that with her hand over her heart. It's part of the Pledge of Allegiance, but that's how she mentioned liberty and talked about Lady Liberty. Rubio said, yeah... Uh, we all have the right to live here in freedom and liberty, but of course he didn't explain exactly how he's going to restore that to us after they've stolen it. Uh, Mike Huckabee mentioned liberty in terms of religious liberty only. He's interested in one half of the First Amendment. He did talk somewhat about the Tenth Amendment. Uh, several of them mentioned the Tenth Amendment in various uh, contexts. But of course, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, yes, it was in the Reagan Library, and they did have a final question uh, where everybody, they went down the line t talking to everybody, well, Ronald Reagan changed the world. How would the world change if you were Ronald Reagan? And so, of course, there were a lot of mentions about that. But in terms of the candidates themselves interjecting it into the debate, of course, Jeb led, Jeb Bush used Ronald Reagan four times as a bulwark uh, to support himself, uh, besides saying that um, uh, he was, uh, he mentioned it in con conjunction with putting Margaret Thatcher on the uh, $10 bill, but he also used it to essentially say, uh, I'm on the side of Ronald Reagan when he's talking to uh, Donald Trump. Uh, Jake Tapper uh, used it a, uh, a couple of times to try to convince the candidates to buy into climate change. He said, you know, 
Uh, how Reagan-esque uh, are you on this? Because Reagan uh, wanted to have insurance policies on things. Uh, Walker, who is a cousin of Bush, used it three times. So they're not a, a, averse to using Ronald Reagan. But we need to go back and we need to look at what Ronald Reagan did in terms of insurance policies. Did he really support the Constitution or did he throw the Second Amendment under the bus when his friend was shot in the assassination attempt to, pra to pass the Brady Bill? We also see civil asset forfeiture, mandatory minimums, which have created a prison state in the United States. Did anybody talk about the private prisons here in America? How we have more people in prison than China does, even though we have many times uh, the population of China. And of course, many of these things were done in the name of the war on drugs. As we played Carly Fiorina talking about her daughter who died because of a war on drugs, and she had it had nothing to do with the war on drugs. Her daughter died from struggles that she had with alcoholism and from prescription drugs. And she interjected that as part of the discussion about the uh, legalization of marijuana. Very disingenuous, exactly the same way that she interjected uh, the uh, statements about uh, uh, what was going on with the Planned Parenthood uh, statements. Again, completely off the cuff. And understand that when you're talking about prescription drugs, and many people like to talk about uh, marijuana being a gateway drug. Uh, Joe was just saying that to me. I, I was going to say that uh, marijuana was a gateway drug, so we could, we could talk about this. Understand that the gateway for her daughter was doctors and the medical community and the dangerous, far more dangerous than marijuana, the dangerous pharmaceutical prescription drugs. But of course, alcohol is one of the most dangerous drugs that we have available to us, one of the most addictive drugs that we have available to us. And yet, prohibition could not stop that. But it was done legally once upon a time. It's not just a Tenth Amendment issue, as Rand Paul was pointing out to Chris Christie. I want to play this uh, back and forth between uh, Rand Paul Jeb Bush and Chris Christie on the issue of marijuana because there were a lot of great issues that were brought up by Rand Paul in the context of this debate. Hey, hang on, Joe. Let's let's hear what uh, what's going on about this question about marijuana. This is a different kind of question. Let's hear this. It's really damaged our inner cities. Not only do the drugs damage them, we damage them again by incarcerating them and then preventing them from getting employment over time. So I don't think that the federal government should override the states. I believe in the Tenth Amendment, and I really will say that the states are left to themselves. I want to give that. Now they're going to go to Chrissy, I guarantee you. That you called a hypocrite uh, an opportunity to respond. Do you want to identify that person? Well, I think if we left it open, we could see how many people smoked pot in high school. <laughs> <laughs> is there somebody you were specifically thinking of? Well, you know, the thing is... He was is talking that, about me. Yeah, I was talking That's about... That's what I thought, so, but well, I wanted let, let me, to say it. Well, I wanted to point, make it me... easier for him. Yeah. Okay. And I just did. Governor Bush, please. So 40 years ago, I smoked marijuana. Uh, and I admit it. I'm sure that other people might have done it. And this is the true confessions of part of the reality TV people. show. My mom's not happy that I just did. <laughs> That's true. But here's the deal. At he should have lost his right to vote. He should have been he put in jail lie for 20 years. This epidemic of drugs that goes way beyond marijuana. What goes on in Colorado, as far as I'm concerned, that should be a state decision. But if you look at the problem of drugs in this in this society today, it's a serious problem. Rand, you know this because you're campaigning in New Hampshire like all of us, and you see the epidemic of heroin, it. the overdoses of heroin that's taking place. People's families are, yes, are coming being from Afghanistan. Apart. Yeah, which, a, which yeah. is why we're the government to play <laughs> <a consistent laughs> protecting it. Who's it's guarding those it. opium fields? Right. Yeah, that no vacuum just, there except the in uh, some noses and yeah. uh, 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 hypodermic needles, right? In, yeah. In, in <clears throat> drug courts to give people a second chance. That's the best way to do this. But let, let me respond. The thing is, is that in Florida, Governor. Bush campaigned against medical marijuana. That means that a small child like Morgan Hintz that has 500 seizures a day is failing on nine traditional medications, is not allowed to use cannabis oil, and that if they attempt to do that in Florida, they will take the child away, they will put the parents in jail, yes. and that's what that means. If you're against allowing people to use medical marijuana, you'll actually put them in jail. Ray, and actually, wrong, under the current circumstances, this. kids who that's, had privilege that's like a you lie, do, go to jail, but the poor kids in our inner, lying, inner cities go to jail. I 
don't think that's fair, and I think that we need to acknowledge it, and it is hypocritical to still want to put poor people in jail. I don't want to put and, poor people in jail, Rand. Well, here's you, the deal. You, you oppose yeah, yeah, you people in, in jail. jail. I oppose yeah. when the legislature passed the bill to deal with that very yeah, issue. more people that's in jail than China does. We've, they've got four times the population, five times the population. Many people.